Now, as former federal prosecutor Patrick Collins, he was the lead prosecutor in the corruption trial. Uh, former Illinois Governor George Ryan is now a partner at King and Spaulding. Patrick, always appreciate having you here. So what now? Do federal prosecutors uh, sit down and have a talk with Madigan? Do they try to get any of the ComEd forward to, to flip for lighter prison sentences? Well, keep in mind, Ben, that um, Mr. McLean is already charged in the Madigan case, mm -hmm. and I think all eyes are sort of on him. I don't suspect that he would flip, as the government likes to say, or any of the ComEd for will flip, but I think that's what the government will be looking for. They're always looking to strengthen their case. The trial for Madigan is in April. Okay, so do prosecutors now talk to Madigan? Is there any potential for, I guess, let's say, a settlement, a deal, or does it go to trial? What, how do those conversations go? You know, Lord, it always, there always can be conversations. I just, I think the sides are pretty dug in, and I suspect this will be going to trial in April. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, every time uh, a a, you know, there's a political corruption case. You hear, oh, this is going to send a signal. We hope this will send a signal. Clearly in Illinois, it has not. Uh, my question for you, though, is hearing from that juror, wasn't that interesting that it could have very easily been a juror, a jury that said, nah, well, you know, this is just business as usual. It's just Chicago. It's just Illinois. What do you think the message is uh, from this verdict? You know, Ben, I've been in and around this process for about 30 years now, and I think we always get juries like this that play it up the middle and really are not happy with the, the government that we have here. Mm -hmm. And I think we often have a defense in the Ryan case, the Bogoyevich case, this case. It was um, politics as usual. It's rough and tumble, but this is legal lobbying. And, and Ben, those defenses just haven't been working. And I think it's because there are jurors like we just heard uh, who are seated. And the line for them is very black and white. There's mm -hmm. not all this gray that the, the defense was trying to create in this trial. Yeah, and in fact, they came up with a verdict within five days. I want to talk a little bit about sentencing because as we heard Jenna Barnes talk about, um, the punishments range from a couple, what could be you know a year to 10 years to $5 million fines. What's the likely scenario here for these four individuals? You know, and again, now that I'm uh, on the defense side in most cases, it's, there's a human side of this, mm -hmm. Lourdes, and there are four individuals with families, and this is a really tough pill to swallow. One of the defense lawyers called these uh, defendants collateral damage, and I do think there's some truth mm -hmm. to that um, because this was all about Speaker Madigan. It wasn't, really wasn't about these four folks. Um, some of these sentences could be pretty harsh. Uh, they have a judge, though, who I think is a fair and merciful mm -hmm. judge, um, but I do think for Mr. McLean, it's the most challenging situation because he was the closest to the speaker, and I think he's the one that sort of um, faces probably the most difficult sentence. Okay. We heard that juror say today one thing that, that they really focused on were the recorded phone calls. Talk about what a difference that makes in a case. Well, the key witness in the case um, um, was the former legislative aide at, at Commonwealth Edison, uh, Mr. Marquez, and he, um, it wasn't so much his testimony, it was the recordings. Mm -hmm. They got him six in the morning, they surprised him, basically got him out of bed, put him in a car, and talked to him about how mm -hmm. this thing could play out and also how it could play out if he cooperated. Mm -hmm. And on that sort of that morning, he made the split decision to cooperate. And it was he then went and recorded calls to each of the other defendants. And I think it was those calls that put the, because these cases are all about intent. Mm -hmm. And then he went to each of the defendants with a story the government created and got each of the defendants to basically. Uh, further the government's case. Mm -hmm. So I think those recordings, Ben, were absolutely the most yeah. important part of the yeah. case. And hearing a voice definitely makes a difference. Um, I do want to ask you about appeals before we go here. On what basis could they appeal this case? We heard the defense attorney say, you know, we plan to appeal. And again, I, I don't... And I know I'm asking you to sort of guess. <laughs> sure, but I, 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 having, again, been around this game <laughs> for 30 years, I, I think the reality is the appeal... Um, Avenue is pretty pretty slim. Limited, yeah. Pretty yeah. slim. And I think um, there, there will be these post-trial motions and then the sentencing process, but the appeal process, they absolutely have to appeal, um, but I do think the case yeah. was pretty strong. In our okay. final 20 seconds or so, from what we publicly know about this case versus the case that's going to be presented against Michael Madigan, is one stronger than the other? I think it's pretty much the similar case. Mm -hmm. um, it's these recordings. You know, there was some weakness with the government. There wasn't a lot of evidence of what Speaker Madigan do, did for these two bills, the 2011 mm -hmm. and 2016 bill. And so I think that's a place where the Madigan defense can go. But I do think these recordings really show what the motive was. It was to get these 
this money, these jobs, and uh, the benefits for Mr. Madigan, and to have him help and hurt, not hurt ComEd in the legislative process. Okay, Patrick Collins, we appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us this Thank evening. Thank you. Thank you. And we will continue to follow developments on the guilty verdict of the ComEd 4 throughout all newscasts. You can always read more at WGNTV.com. Get breaking updates on our news app.